Sugar Live. <laughs> Short and sweet. So we paused here. Okay. Um, in the homework on the conservation of momentum one and two, there was a couple of nasty questions where, as a twist, I said, hey, find the mass, either the incoming mass for M1 or M2. And I haven't done one like that. That was partly intentional, Trish. I'm always curious if you can figure it out. And some of you did, and I'm impressed. But you know what? In example three, I'm asking you to find a mass. So before I take questions from the homework, how do I find a mass? Let's try this one. Finding a mass is physics 12. I'm going to tell you right now, on your test, I don't believe I'm going to ask you to find a mass, unless it's a bonus question. Or maybe it might be a nasty multiple choice, but I wouldn't make it a written worth several marks. So hopefully by now, all of you have turned and figured out where we left off. We left off where it says example three. So in designing a ballistic pendulum, you want a bullet of mass six grams and speed 600. We scribbled out that whatever was below the uh, meters per second to make a pendulum bob rise three centimeters. What mass must the bob have? Recall, find it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So here's what we said. We said uh, in the ballistic pendulum, there was two situations. There was shack, the collision, the job for momentum, and then there was the change in uh, the swing, uh, job for conservation of energy. So generally, if I notice that there is a collision and a change in height, my whole strategy is uh, divide the page in half. Collision and swing. OK, this question's significantly more challenging. What's this question asking me to find? OK, the mass. Did they tell me both velocities, v initial and v final, or did they tell me the height of the swing? I'm going to start with the swing part and work my way backwards, I hope. So in the swing, we have a change in height, change in speed. We would say that's a job for, especially with a curvy path, conservation of energy. Which of these are zero? When am I stopped in the swing portion? When am I stopped in the swing portion? Top of the swing, so final kinetic. And when am I on the ground in the swing portion? OK. Now, kinetic is going to be a half. This is the mass of both the initial squared equals the mass of both GH. Even though I was really careful and fussy, Ben, to say it is the mass of both because they're stuck together, it turns out I didn't quite need to be that fussy. Is there a mass of both in everything? Then. And what this lets me do is this lets me figure out what V initial was because they told me the height, Jeff. This lets me figure out how fast they started moving off. And if I know that, I can, in theory, work my way back and find some other stuff during the collision. With me so far? So let's get the V by itself. I think it's going to be. 2 g h, except Jeff, how to get rid of a squared. Yeah, we've seen that little dance before, yes? So for this thing to go 8 centimeters high, it has to be traveling 2 times 9.8 times, oh, sorry, 3 centimeters, 0 0.03. It has to be traveling this fast. 2 times 9.8 times 0 0.03 equals square root. Has to be going 0.7668. Anybody else? Is that right? Yes? Has to be going, and I'll carry some extra sig figs, 0 0.7668. 0 0.7668 meters per second. OK. How's that help? Well, we're going to use this over here in the collision. Did I say collision? That's a job for conservation of momentum. I'm going to write the sum of all the momentum before equals the sum of all the momentum 
after. In our ballistic pendulum, in this setup here, before the collision, what's moving? Mass one, mass two, or both? So I'm going to have momentum one initial. You still cold? Bam! They collide. Warm you up at all? No? I keep missing because I'm getting Dane right between the eyes. So it's just over your shoulder. After the collision, what's moving? Mass one, mass two, or both? Stuck together or separate? So it's going to be stuck together. And again, remember, if they're separate shack, all we would do is we would have momentum one final, momentum two final. I go really systematically on this because it's easy to make mistakes on this. But usually, if I get to this line, as long as I'm careful, I'll be good the rest of the way. Because now I'm going to substitute momentum itself is what times what. Now, by the way, don't get momentum confused with change in momentum. Another word for which is? Because change in momentum means you're going to need two momentums, final minus initial, two velocities, or force times time. Here, just got the one. Momentum is mv. So momentum one is going to be m1, v1 initial, equals m1 plus m2, v final. And here's now where the question gets a little bit weird. Shaq, what are they asking me to find here? So is that mass one or mass two, folks? They're asking me, OK, they're asking me to get this by itself. I think what I would do first, probably, is I would actually get rid of the brackets. Because to me, this is sort of like, don't write this down, this is sort of like 12 equals 3 plus x times 5, where you're trying to get the x by itself. I think you would go, well, let's get rid of that first. Yeah? You know, we're not used to having the 5 on the end. Usually the 5 would be in the front, but it's the same idea. So I'm going to get m1 v1 equals m1 v final plus M2, V final. What are we trying to get by itself? M2, which is sitting right there. Suggestions. Move that guy over. Good call. So I'm going to get M1 V1 minus M1 V final equals M2 V final. Oh, OK. I'm still trying to get the M2 by itself? How? Now, be very, very careful. The V's, even though there's a V in all three terms, that V is different from that V. The V's don't cancel. Looks like I'm going to end up with this. Mass 2 is going to be mass 1, V1 initial, minus mass 1, V final, all divided by V final. Now, in your homework, I think in the conservation of momentum sheet, you were actually, there's a question where you were trying to get the M1 by itself, and there was two of them. If there was two of them, who remembers, those of you that did the homework and figured it out, how could I turn two M1s into one M1 using a wonderful grade 9 mathematical operation? You could factor out a GCF. Now, if, that, if, you, if I lost you there, when you're, if you want to towards the end of class, after I finish the lesson, I'll happily do a couple from conservation. I think it was a conservation momentum one that had those on there. And I'll take questions from both of them. Was it two? Yeah. OK. Couldn't remember. I'll be honest. The second one is actually what I used to get my grade, grade 12s. So I just changed the numbers. Um, hey, now we're plug and chug. Mass two is going to be mass one bullet. 6 grams, which is, uh, oh, 0 0.006. V1 initial. What was V1 initial? Six. 
600 minus mass 1, 0 0.006, V final, 0.7668, all over 0.7668. Is that right, Rob? I think, yeah. Now it's uh, plug and chug. Let's see. Bracket 0 0.006 times 600 minus 0 0.006 times answer button divided by answer button. I'm cleverly using the answer. Okay. Um, that looks good, looks good, looks good, looks good. I think that's going to work. You get 4.7 kilos? Now, uh, instead of this ballistic pendulum, what we're actually looking at the physics of is uh, bomb investigations. Imagine instead this was not a collision, this was an explosion. If you knew the mass and distance and velocity of a piece that went that way, you could figure out how heavy a piece of the bomb that you were looking for that went off in the opposite direction. Now, it's much more complicated because bombs go in three dimensions. We will look at two dimensions in physics 12. We will look at angles in physics 12. Three dimensions is just a, a natural extension, but this is some of the applications of this. Certainly, if you're with the RCMP or the FBI and you're investigating a bomb, you can piece it together based on looking at the fragments, and Jeff, you can make a pretty accurate prediction of where missing fragments might have been, how heavy they were, and how far they went. It's physics. Let's go to something a little nicer than bombs and bullets and roller coasters. A three kilogram car is traveling at 18.5 meters per second and it collides with a stationary two kilogram car on a frictionless track. The cars stick together and move off. A says, with what combined height do the cars reach up the next hill? Cool. And then we got, what, one more roller coaster and, yep, two questions, we're done. Cool, 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 cool. Okay. Is there a collision? That's going to be a job for conservation momentum. Is there a change in height and a change in speed and a somewhat curvy path? This is the ballistic pendulum, essentially, but instead of swinging up on a rope, we're going up a hill. It's okay. Work at energy is a scalar. It doesn't really care what the path looks like. So again, we're going to have collision. Hill. What are they asking me to find? H, the height. Okay. I think what's going to happen is I'm going to do a conservation of energy here, get H by itself, but I'll be missing something. But I'll be able to find that something by doing the collision. Plan they collide. Does that make sense? So let's set up our conservation of energy, see how far we can go, and see where we end up, Emma, going, ah, I need something else, and then we'll go do the collision part. Uh, change in height, change in speed. Hey, that's a job for KE initial, PE initial, KE final, PE final. Are any of these zero? Now remember, kinetic energy is zero when you come to a stop or if you start at rest. Are any of these zero after the collision? Oh, at the top of the hill? Now, a lot of people want to say, in fact, my last class, I had a whole bunch of students say, oh, initial kinetic is zero, Mr. Dewitt, because it says at rest. That's before the collision. After the collision, I would argue, Emma, both of them are moving. OK, are any heights zero? Yeah. In fact, this is looking almost identical to the bullet question, yeah. It's going to be a half the mass of both the initial squared equals m g h final. Oh, and that m is also the mass of both. <coughs> Do 
conveniently. Whoop! Don't cross out G, Mr. Duke. There. What are we trying to find? H. Oh, let's get the H by itself. How? If you do that, you're going to get uh, the final height is vi squared divided by g. And you know what? I'll put a 2 in the bottom instead of timesing by a half because that's the same thing. Do I know g? 9.8. Not negative because we're doing scalar. Do I know v initial after the collision? Uh, no. Did I say after the collision? That's a job for conservation of momentum. Let's go over here. Before the collision, the sum of the momentum has to equal after the collision, the sum of the momentum. Before the collision, what's moving? Mass one, mass two, or both? Mass one? You know what? Since they called it A and B, I'll go mass A, since they conveniently labeled the cars that way. You could go mass one, mass two. I'd figure it out, but... So it's going to be MA, VA initial. You ready? Wham, they collide. After the collision, what's moving? Mass A, mass B, or both? Stuck together or separate? OK. I went straight to sticking in MA. I didn't write the P's like I have, because I'm kind of going to run out of room here. What do we want here? Sorry? I think what we want is that, which is going to be the V that I need over there. So how would I get V final by itself? Divide by the bracket. Hey, this isn't too bad. It's going to be MA, VA initial, divided by MA plus MB. It's going to be 3 times 18.5 divided by 3 plus 2. So after the collision, I'll add the 3 plus 2 in my head. That's a 5 on the bottom there, yes? After the cl Oh, nice. 11.1? Is that right? Anybody else? Yeah. 11.1 .1 meters per second. And now, let's plug it in here. 11.1 .1 squared divided by 2 times 9.8. This number squared divided by bracket 2 times 9.8. Ta-da! 6.3 meters, 6.29, oh heck, 6.3 meters. Six point three meters. <clears throat> now, I don't know, I've looked haven't found yet if there is actually a roller coaster where the cars <laughs> collide into each other. That would be a pretty spectacular collision and probably unsafe. So I can't come up with a good amusement park ride example where you actually change height. You do, by the way, you collide with each other all the time in which classic ride in amusement parks? Bumper cars. Bumper cars. Great examples of conservation momentum, totally. But there it's all flat. It's not going to be a change in energy state, sorry. Pardon me? The log ride, but they don't let you collide very fast, and you don't, really what you do is you end up transferring some of your energy to the log in front of you, but then it transfers most of its energy to the water because it starts to move forward and the water slows it down pretty quickly, or the water pulls it along somewhat. Haven't really found a good one. You know what? A car accident gone horribly wrong, really, or, or, or a, a roller coaster where something is broken and gone horribly wrong. Mining accident, I don't know. 
but the physics is good. Uh, B says the steepness is increased, as shown below. Sorry, decreased, yeah, as shown below. If we decrease the slope, making it shallower, the new, everything else stays the same. The combined cars will reach a lesser height, the same height, or a greater height. The same. Let's vote. Who says less high? No one. Who says same height? Who says, no, they're going to go higher. It's shallower. Why? I agree with you. It's the same height. How come? Energy is a scale. It doesn't care about the shape of the path that you get there. In fact, you could actually build your hill, don't write this down, to do this. And as long as you made it over the top, I don't know if you would or not, that, that could be a problem. But if you made it over the top, whatever energy is you slowed down, you slowed down, you slowed down, you'd gain, you'd gain, you'd gain, you'd speed up, speed up, speed up, you'd still be at the same speed right there. Or you could certainly build the hill all wavy. You'd still get there. If we ignore friction, Michael, and we are. So is there an advantage between a steep hill and a shallow hill? Well, steep hill, you'll get to the top quicker. You'll uh, use more power, because power is how much work done in a shorter amount of time. Shallower hill, if this was actually a company, if it was a shallower hill and you're running this from an electric motor, you could use a smaller electric motor because you're generating less power. You don't need as much power. You're using less power. Last one. Roller coaster of mass 225 kilograms at the top of a 6.5 meter high hill traveling. It rolls down, that's a change in height, that's conservation of energy. Strikes an identical stationary car. Bam, they collide. The two cars stick together. How high up the next hill will the next... You know what? This question here has three parts. Down the first hill. Collision. Up the second hill. How would I figure out how fast the car is traveling at the bottom of the first hill? Change in height, change in speed. Use conservation of energy. Wham, they collide. Use conservation of Momentum. Go up the next hill. Use conservation of energy. I'm not going to finish this question. I just kind of changed my mind. This is a long question. But can you see, Emma, we're at the top of a hill. We have initial kinetic energy. We roll down to the bottom of that first hill. So all of this potential also turns into kinetic. Along with that kinetic, I can find V final at the bottom of the first hill. And here, wham, they collide. Momentum initial equals momentum, both final. And then how high do we move? We can handle it. I'm not going to give you one this yucky. That's a little overkill. I don't know what I was thinking when I created that. Homework. Hang on.
Take home quiz due Tuesday, Thursday. I keep thinking today's Thursday for some reason. Don't ask me why. Test is Thursday, May the 6th? No, that's March. I'm looking at 8th? Thursday, May the 8th. Okay. So uh, we'll go over the take-home quiz Thursday. I also have a review assignment. I'll give it to you today, but you'll also have time to work on it Thursday as well. Probably next week, Tuesday, we'll start the next unit a little bit. I think the next unit is going to be vectors, and we'll start off with a trig review, which many of you have already done in your math classes, but that's okay. I always assume you've forgotten everything. So let me give you a bunch of handouts.